So you're stuck on a paper. A lot of people will tell you, you can't edit something that isn't there with the sentiment to just write something and worry about polishing it up later. That's great as an idea, but what happens when you stare at a blank page and then back at your prompt and your brain is empty? You swore you had ideas, but you can't seem to write anything because you aren't sure which ideas are more useful than others, so you stare into nothingness while curling up in the fetal position. Familiar? Maybe a little too specific. This is all hypothetical, of course, but what are some ways to fight off existential dread caused by a blank page? Well, my name is Celia, and I've curled up into many a fetal position. In my experience, a tool I found really helpful is one that sounds incredibly obvious and maybe even too simple to really make a difference. But you can help your brain so much by just putting something into that Word doc or page or whatever it is you're working on. That could be the prompt itself, some questions from your notes, the ideas talked about in class, even just some quotes from the text that help remind you what it is you're focusing on, depending on what the assignment is asking for. This way, you aren't tasked with writing something completely alone. For some reason, just having other words to look at encourages your brain to begin building momentum and ideas. Once it's on the page, it becomes easier to see connections between different ideas and piece together what might have been detached individual answers. Sometimes it's the paragraph that you don't end up using that shows you the direction to head towards. The initial block is what you need to get through. Part of this is still easier said than done, but hopefully this shows one way to begin the leap of faith of writing something new. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Garrett. So my problem is transferring themes from the text into my own writing and analysis. And, well, that's kind of a big problem when a lot of the assignments that you have kind of require you to read something and put it into your own words, your own ideas. So my solutions for doing this is the first one is that I turn off what I like to call my writing brain. And that's the thought process I use when I'm writing a paper, when I'm formulating my own ideas. And so the reason I do this is because you can't be thinking about what you're going to write about a piece that you have to read before you've actually read it. It's just impossible. It doesn't make any sense. So then the second step there is just read to get the essence of the text. Just read it as it was intended to be read, just as a reader. Go through it. Just be the author's audience and see what are they trying to get you to understand or get out of the text. When you can do that, suddenly all of the connections, more things become clear that then you can use in your own writing when you're analyzing it. And then you can go back through and analyze what you've read from the mindset of, okay, what am I gonna write about this? And again, you can't do that until you've actually understood what the author wants you to get out of the piece. So a lot of the things that I like to do while I'm reading to get the essence of the text is like annotate circle, underline, like anything you can that you think is significant or relates to what you might want to write about later. That doesn't mean you're thinking about what you're, what you're specifically going to write, but you're thinking about those important themes that you can then use later on. And then when you get finished, you know, going through the entire essence of the thing, you can decide to go back through and look at those things you underlined or the key ideas, pull out quotes, excerpts that you can use and what you want to write. And then suddenly, I think it becomes a lot more manageable when you take that two-step approach to reading the piece. So I'm Ryan and my problem is feeling very overwhelmed just with the prompt. Um, when I get a paper, my immediate reaction is anxiety because I feel like even though I pay attention in class, I take notes, I do everything that I'm supposed to, I still feel like I'm just going to be blindsided for some reason. So my solution to this problem is even if I think I know the paper through and through, or if I don't, I talk it out with my professor. So I read the prompt. I say, hey, can we have a few minutes after class and talk about it? And they'll say yes, obviously, because they're great here at Rockford. <laughs> um, and then I'll sit down with them and I'll say, this is what I'm getting from the prompt. This is what I plan on talking about. This is what I know about the topic. Does it seem okay to you? And they'll say yes or no. You're on the right track, you're not on the right track. Um, and that kind of just gives me validation as a writer that I know what I'm talking about and that I know what I've been learning and I, it's sticky in my brain so I can refer to it back. So just that little reassurance and validation really helps me write my papers.
Hi, I'm Stephanie, and my problem usually comes from when I'm faced with an essay that's full of questions in the prompt. And I feel like a lot of my classes for like either like political science or like history, like they contain a bunch of questions. And I guess a good example that I want to talk about was recently, um, Kim and I have a class together for um, English 381. It's Modern Irish Lit, and we had a close reading paper to do. And I had never done one of those, and Dr. Ray posted the prompt and in the prompt in the guidelines, there were a bunch of questions for like diction, narrative voice, figurative language. And so what I did, this may seem very straightforward, but I literally went through each single question and answered it. And I did all this on a separate sheet of paper because if I did it on the Google doc, I would get a little confused. So then once I like answered every single question and there were a bunch of them, I would say there was probably like 20 of them in Dr. Ray's guidelines. I like got a good like sense of what I wanted to talk about. And I was then able to cr like create my thesis. So then after that was done, I go back into the Google doc and I'm very big on organization. So I went through for each paragraph and I would write one word describing what that paragraph would be. That way it would help me with like following and like writing the essay. And then lastly, just a helpful tip I've learned, especially like in the last semester from a history professor was to wait to work on your intro last. Because I know sometimes when I wanna start a paper, I'm like freaking out. Cause I'm like, I don't know how to start my intro or like what to say, but I've learned just to like start with your body paragraphs and like what you already know. And then you can work on your intro and then your conclusion last. Hi everyone, I'm Kim and my problem is getting the ideas out of my head and onto the page. I often find myself struggling to work through ideas completely in my head as I feel like there's just too much going on in there to really formulate anything worth writing. So in order to get the ideas out of my head and onto the page, I grab someone to talk to, usually my mom, and work through the assignment with her. So don't worry too much about how much your partner knows about the topic because it's often helpful to talk to a blank slate as you can explain in as much detail as you need. Whereas on the other side, it's great to talk to an expert because they can help you figure out what you need to say or what you might be missing. So as I'm talking about the assignment and what I'm supposed to do, I always find myself coming up with these great ideas and evidence that I'd like to add to the paper. So in order to not forget those awesome ideas and evidence, I use Microsoft Word's dictate option, or if you're on Google Docs, it would be um, voice typing. So I use those to record and type out what I'm saying aloud. And I trust that you guys can look up where to find those if you're interested. And basically what it does is as I go through the instructions of the assignment, the knowledge I have on the topic and the ideas I have for the paper with my partner, I have my laptop listening and typing everything that I'm saying. So once I finish discussing the assignment, I read through the computer's text, take out any unnecessary information and reorganize for the sake of clarity, then boom, I have a really ugly and underdone rough draft. So I use this draft as an outline, placing the text into the notes on my document and begin the paper from there. It's also really beneficial that I'm no longer staring at a blank page, but a page full of sketched out ideas. So this method is really helpful for people who feel as though they speak better than they write or they think better aloud. So I hope you give it a try and that it helps you as much as it's helped me. Hi, I'm Dr. Kyle Stedman. I teach in the English department. And I know you're saying, wait, you're the professor who's giving us all these problems. But you know, I'm a writer too. I'm someone who as part of my job and as part of my interest, I'm always trying to produce writing. And I was thinking about a recent project that I started maybe a, a year or two ago. And I was talking to a friend who had a very different scholarly interest than mine. I focus a lot on sound and how people write and use sound to communicate ideas. And this friend, he, he does professional writing. He talks about how people in businesses and at their jobs do writing. And we were talking and we started realizing there were all these connections between our fields that neither of us had ever thought about before. And there was something about the energy of that conversation. We, we were just at a party at a conference, you know, we're, we're casually talking. And the more we talked about it, the more we're like, we have to write this. So even though I was busy, even though I had a million other things I should be doing later, uh, I think it was just the week after that, we started emailing and we started a thing and we got a Google doc going that we were sharing. And I remember feeling like we moved forward on this project really fast. And looking back at it, a little part of me is like, how did we do that? So for me, the key was the excitement. And I know what you're saying. You're like, lucky for you, you get to pick what you want to write about. A lot of times in my classes, I don't get to pick what I want to write about. I get it. I get that that's true. And yet there's this little part of me that wonders, 
how could you find some excitement in the prompts that you get? Is it possible? I know not every class will let you do this, but is it possible to find a way to work in a, a personal story when that's appropriate, to, to work in a connection to something that you're reading or thinking about? Um, if not personal, um, could you slide in something that you know that you love or a, a style or an author or a kind of quote or a kind of focus that you love, even if you don't say in the essay, I personally love this. Of course, if your professor lets you, go ahead and say that. Say, <laughs> I personally love this. So I know it's vague, but, but my advice is to always look for the excitement. Always, as you're doing your reading, as you're doing your prep, always see if there's something there that will try to make you feel interested about it. And if not, talk to a friend, find someone at a party. And I'm kind of repeating what Kim said, but find someone, whether they know about your topic or not, that you can just chat about, that you can find those interesting connections that you might not have even known were there. Well, thank you all for watching. We really appreciate it. You guys are what makes all this possible. And we're here to help you all. We really do love it. We love when you come in with all your, uh, your developing writing. And, you know, we're just weird like that. We enjoy that stuff. So uh, if our incessant rambling didn't help you at all, we have these three resources that might be able to be of assistance for you. They cover a few different aspects of the moving into the writing process. So if you didn't get what you wanted to out of this video, feel free to check these resources out. And also, we would love to see you in person in the writing center or submit through a VWC, whatever, uh, you know, suits your fancy. So thanks for watching. And just remember the best thing you can do is just get something down on that page. Thanks for watching everyone and have a great day. Sweet. Did I hit record? We're recording. Yes. We are. I think so. Right. I I'm kind of making a joke, so I think it won't be too weird. I feel like mine was a lot less practical than yours but i'm just gonna move on oh i saw kim waving so i was like okay oh good i, I thought it'd be a cute I moment for everyone to wave. i trust your editing I feel like everyone was so calm and i was like and then you do this and then you do this he says <laughs> are you ready kids uh, and then we all say aye aye captain okay so that's 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 our ending right are you ready kids <laughs> aye aye captain <laughs> this, this is not funny